Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, glazing and uh, staining our pinch pots that we made uh, during that first week. So, um, so everybody should have three of these pinch pots. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to apply stain on the uh, uh, on the outside of the vessel and um, glaze on the inside. And um, so you should have texture on the outside. And so one of the things that, uh, one of the reasons why we put texture on the outside is so that we could learn how to use the stain to accentuate the texture. And so what we're gonna do is, um, we are going to apply this iron oxide stain. It's a red, uh, red iron oxide. And um, then um, when it fires, it will be this really beautiful, um, Kind of dark, uh, dark brown, and um, anywhere where it's thick, like these thicker areas, the low parts here is going to be um, really dark, almost like a gunmetal kind of color. And then the higher parts, we're going to wipe the surface off, so the higher parts are going to uh, create a little bit of a lighter surface. So, um, so anyway, what you first need to do though when you come into the glaze room is you're going to have your your pinch pot and you first need to wipe any um, dust off the surface. So this isn't a super big issue with the stain, but it is a big issue with the glaze. Um, if we don't wipe dust off of the surface of our object, we can get this um, glaze defect called crawling. And so crawling, you can kind of see here where it actually separates off of the surface. A lot of times it happens around the rim of an object and um, it, it actually literally pulls away from uh, areas of the, of the surface of the, of the work and creates a, like a bare spot. And so, um, and one of the causes of that is dust, okay? It's exacerbated by a really, really thick glaze, so that's yet another reason why we don't want to glaze too thick. But um, what happens is the glaze doesn't adhere to the surface of the, of the bisqueware. So, um, so anyway, what we're going to do is, you know, I take a clean sponge, your round sponge. I usually just have a, a bucket of water, a um, clean bucket of water out here. And, um, and just all you have to do is just kind of wipe out, you know, wipe off the surface. If you have a really intense texture here and you feel like the sponge, pieces of the sponge are coming off into the texture, um, we do have compressed air in the loading dock area over there. So you could actually just blow it off. We um, typically with like the larger works that we might make in the studio, uh, when we go to this process, we will usually just blow those off. But for now, just make sure you just kind of wipe it off. You don't have to soak it. Like that's just plenty and that'll dry, you know, quickly. Um, so we don't want this to be wet when we're applying um, the, the glaze and the stain. So with these, with these objects, what I want you to do is I want you to stain it first, okay? So um, that's not always the process for every single thing that you, every time you glaze. And you don't necessarily always use the stain. The stain is uh, to create this, this type of color here. Um, so, um, but the stain is in this container here, red iron oxide stain. Um, what I do first is I make sure the lid is on uh, I've learned that the hard way. Don't shake it with the lid off because it'll go everywhere. Um, so I shake this up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it. Now if you're just doing a, you know, like right now I am doing just a small one, but you don't necessarily always have to pour it into another container. Um, but I use, I often find it's a little bit easier to, um, to use a brush, but you can use it right out of here if you'd like. Okay. Um, but the pouring into this other container will allow me to show you how it settles. So one of the challenges of using iron oxide stain is that it's essentially rust in water, okay? So it's heavy and it's gonna sink to the bottom really quickly. And so it's a little hard to see in the video maybe, but it is already starting to sink just a little bit. You see there's a little film of water Already. So just in the last 20 seconds of me explaining this to you, it's already started to kind of sink. And so the way that we get around that is to stir it with your brush almost every time you brush 
onto it. You know, like kind of reach down to the bottom with the brush and kind of twirl it. And just that agitation will, will suspend those iron oxide particles back into the, uh, into the liquid. So can't really see it in the video, but I am stirring it right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush. So you should have a brush like this in your kit. And I'm gonna start painting it onto the surface of, of the object, okay? And the idea is that you wanna cover every area that you want to have slip, or um, not slip, but uh, stain on it, okay? And you wanna get a good coating all the way around because you are going to wipe this off anyway. Not completely, but you're gonna take a, a sponge and, and, um, and uh, you know, wipe off the high points. If you don't wipe off the high points, I, um, it, it, it can actually get so thick that it can run a little bit and it can actually stick to the shell. Um, generally, you can have, um, uh, you can actually have uh, stain on the bottom, and that's one of the advantages of the stain, is that it can be on the bottom, as long as you kind of wipe it off a little bit. Okay, so as long as it's not too thick, um, it can actually be on the bottom, and it's one of, one of the two things that we use in the studio that can be on the bottom of your work. Um, so slip is the other one. And so slip, um, you know, is not, is not gonna seal over or glaze over. And so you can actually have it, um, you know, on the bottom. So, um, okay, so now that I've covered this, I don't wanna do the inside, because I'm gonna glaze in there, but I'm, I have the outside. Now, if I didn't do anything to this, it would be really, really dark, and it wouldn't really show the texture very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sponge again, and just get you know most of the water out so it's just damp you know and I'm just gonna start to go over the surface a little bit here and it, you can kind of see that um, it's starting to accentuate those um, those hot the, that texture that I put in there okay so um, and the nice thing about this technique is that you know if you feel like you've wiped off too much you know you can just put more on it's not, it's not a big deal, okay? I'm gonna wipe off the bottom a little bit, so see how they're stained there on the bottom still? That will not stick to the shelf, okay? Now, if I just applied some and just let it sit there and didn't wipe it off, you know, then that would, that would stick. But, um, you know, as long as you kinda just come at it like this, and you can see what the sponge is doing, is it's basically just taking off the highest points, okay? And so that's about good, you know, I. I um, will have some areas, like when I fire this, I'll have some areas like this part here, these lighter areas, that'll be a light brown. Um, and then these areas here, like this kind of patch of darker, um, like where there's more iron oxide, um, that'll be much darker. You know, that'll be like almost like a gun metal kind of color, okay? Um, and um, so I, when I glaze this, I'm gonna come down just a tiny bit on that rim. So. Um, so I, I'm gonna leave it like that. When you're doing that, you'll notice it builds up on the sponge, okay? So um, just, just keep cleaning your sponge out. And that's another nice thing about just having a bucket here rather than having to walk all the way over to the sink every time. Okay, so now I can, you know, have a relatively clean sponge. Um, so um, you can see here, see how much that, that stain has already settled? So it has dropped down in that liquid, you know, about a half an inch already. And so, you know, and that just didn't take very long. So, um, so anyway, just remember, that's one of the critical things that uh, people mix up is they don't stir this enough. And then they wonder why when they're applying the stain, it's just so, it's super watery and you're not getting a good coverage of stain. Um, if you think, you know, if you think something is wrong with the stain, if it feels very thick or very thin, um, come find me or one of the advanced students or the resident artist or somebody that um, can take a look at this for you. I'm here in the glaze room and this is a confusing place, okay? So um, there are, are, are no dumb questions when it comes to anything in here. So always just, um, you know, ask questions. If, you, if you're here by yourself and you can't find anybody, um, then the best thing to do is just to wait until you can find somebody 
um, you know, or message me on Canvas or something like that. So, um, so that's it for this video. I'm going to do another video about the glazing process. So, um, but that's what your your uh, stained um, pinch pot should look like. And when it's fired, it'll look like this. Okay, so you can kind of see it's more of a like kind of a reddish rust color. And then this is much darker and kind of a richer uh, color. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, and again, this is just a really great way to accentuate texture and make a really nice uh, kind of beautiful kind of worn uh, look to, um, to an object. So, um, so um, you'll need to do that on your pinch pots and then watch this other video that I'm going to make about um, the glazing.